Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Barry Denix here, and we're going to be going over how to control a brushless motor with a Raspberry Pi today. So one thing to know with ESCs, you actually have to initialize them before you can actually just start using the brushless motor. And I actually got some info from this website, this motionrc.com right here. And you can see what they actually tell us to do is, um, here's how to initialize your ESC. Step one, remove the propeller for safety. Uh, step two, turn on your radio and move the throttle to full power to top position. Step three, plug in your battery. You will hear a series of quick beeps. You have four seconds to move your throttle. Stick from full power to idle. Once you do that, you will hear another quick series of beeps. That signifies that your ESC has been initialized. And step four, just disconnect the battery and turn off your radio. So what we need to do is actually do this, not with a radio controller, but with a PWM signal that we're controlling with our Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to show you how, to, how you can actually do that. So how we're actually going to be doing this with code. Uh, with this being said from MotionRC.com, if using a radio controller, we need to power up the ESC and turn on the radio controller and move the throttle stick to full throttle until we hear a quick series of beeps. Uh, to accomplish this with code, we will need to send a 100% pre-WM signal or 10% duty cycle for two seconds. And just to clarify, duty cycle values, the exact values for full throttle and maximum throttle can vary depending on your ESC. Common values are 10% for full throttle and 5% for minimum throttle. And the frequency that we're actually going to be using for our PWM signal is actually going to be 50 hertz which is common for a lot of ESCs on the market. And you can see a little snippet of code right here. You can actually see that we're just going to import PWM output device from GPIO0. We're using GPIO0 because we're actually on a Raspberry Pi 5 today instead of a Raspberry Pi 4. And you see down here, we're also going to have to import time. We're actually going to be using pin 26 today. And you can see that we're actually making a variable called motor right here. and that variable is actually representing PWM output device and we're with our pin number and also the frequency that we're going to be using which is at 50 Hertz you can actually see we have a function right down here and what this function is actually doing is setting our PWM signal that we're going to be sending out to the ESC and you can actually see we have a little bit of error handling inside of here which you do not need necessarily or actually you don't need the function as well uh, like you don't need the function either and you can see that we're actually using a 10% duty cycle to initialize the ESC and we're just holding that on there for two seconds and we're just dividing that by 100 because we do want a value in between 0 and 1 so the actual value if you just wanted to do say for instance motor dot value equals if you wanted to actually just output 10% duty cycle all you would need to do is 0 0.1 and that would be 10 percent of one so you can do it that way either whatever is actually easier for you you'll actually see in my code that i kind of do it both ways now just some code that you're going to want to know before you actually start writing some for yourself first of all we're going to be using gpio0 which i was telling you about that's what we're actually using to output that pwm signal and what we're importing that library from we're also going to be using time because we want to have some delays in there so we can actually continue to send that PWM signal for whatever amount of time that we allot to that. You can see DEF down here. This is just going to be a keyword in Python used to define a function. Functions allow you to encapsulate code that can be called and executed multiple times within a script, often with different parameters. You can see we actually have try down here as well. This isn't completely necessary, but it's nice having error handling. And also, you actually don't want your Raspberry Pi to continue to send a PWM signal once your script's actually done, because then the motor is going to continue to run, which isn't a problem at the end of your script if you output a zero PWM signal. But if you do control C and you're in the middle of your script, it's going to continue to output. That's why try is really nice, because you can cancel your script at any point and it will still set it to zero before you end up exiting out of that script and you can see PWM output device PWM output device is a class provided by GPIO0 library for easy output of PWM pulse with modulation signal to control devices like LEDs motors with varying levels of intensity 
or speed. Now this is actually how I have my Raspberry Pi 5 hooked up to my ESC here. You can also see that we have this red wire coming out of the ESC as well. And what this actually is, is 5 volts. You can actually power your Raspberry Pi through the ESC if you want to do that. I didn't end up doing that because I consistently kept turning off my power supply, my DC power supply to reset the ESC. So I didn't want it to turn my Raspberry Pi off every time I did that. But that is definitely an option if uh, that's something that you're interested in. Another thing, the wires that are coming out that are powering your brushless motor, it does not matter what orientation you plug them in at. You can plug them in any way you want to. That's all part of the initialization process. It will actually determine the phasing and what it needs to do to spin the motor properly. So just something something else to keep in mind. And you can actually see down here, this is uh, this black is a ground and your PWM signal is actually just going to be coming through the white wire. So you can see that we're actually on 26 down here, that pin the GPIO pin 26. All right, you can actually see this little GIF that is demonstrating how a brushless motor operates. For all intents and purposes, a brushless motor is the same as a three-phase motor. So what your ESC is actually doing whenever you initialize it is determining where your rotor is in reference to your stator. Once it determines that, and also the phasing of your brushless motor, what it will do is it will actually heat up Say for instance, A coil, once it does that, the north and south pole will align with the magnetic field of A coil. Once that's done, it will actually stop sending current through A phase. Then it will turn on B phase and start sending current through B phase. And then this, the rotor will rotate to align with B phase's magnetic field. And that's also the same with C phase. Then it will turn B phase low, it won't actually send current through B phase anymore, and then it will turn C phase high. And then the actual rotor will align with the magnetic field of C phase, and then this will actually continue to repeat. And the faster you actually want to spin your rotor, the faster these pulses actually go. Now like I said before, a brushless motor can be thought of as a three phase motor, and I have an example for you. So what you can actually do is, you can take some resistors and hook them up to each of the three phases of your brushless motor. And here's an example that I actually hooked up. So what I actually did was I just soldered three resistors together and then hooked up each of the outside of these resistors to each of the phases of the brushless motor. And these are just 220 ohm resistors. Now one other thing that you can actually see here that I actually am using the Y configuration right here. The main reason that I did that was because I wanted a reference for all of my oscilloscope leads so I can actually hook up all of their grounds up to the neutral, so the center of these three resistors. You can also, like I said, set this up in a delta configuration, but for my convenience that's why I ended up setting this up as a Y. I got a little video here, so this will just show you that if we end up spinning the brushless motor, it acts exactly like a three-phase generator. See, I actually got all the probes hooked up to the outside of each of the phases of the brushless motor and, like I said, hooked up the ground reference to the neutral takes me a little bit to actually get this hooked up properly for the oscilloscope. And like you can see right here, you actually have all three phases of each of the wires coming out of the brushless motor. So this is just showing you that For all intents and purposes, that uh, brushless motor is the same as a three-phase AC motor. Now, something else to keep in mind that you might actually see on some of your ESCs are these ferrite beads. 
At the bottom, the bead must be threaded onto a wire. The purpose is either to limit radio frequency radiation from a wire by absorbing it into the bead where it transforms into heat, or to protect a wire from external sources of radio frequency radiation, computer cabling to external devices, lamps, dimmers, and some types of motors can be sources of radio frequency. Now, I'm going to give you a little example right here of this actually happening because I have an ESC that doesn't have one of these ferrite beads. And I'm just going to show you that right here, what can actually happen. All right, so inside of this video, you can actually see that the ESC is thinking that it's getting a PWM signal, even though it's not. So it was pretty weird. I was just sticking my fingers around it, and then the motor would start spinning faster. So I do believe this is an example of radio frequency, and this is why ferrite beads are very important with some ESCs. Uh, the other ESC I have never had this problem, but I did notice it with this one, which was lacking one of those ferrite beads. All right, so we can hop over into the terminal and check this thing out. All right, so now we're in VS Code. And the first thing that we're actually going to need to start doing is import PWM output device from GPIO0, import time. We're going to have to set our pin variable to 26. We're going to make another variable called motor, which is just PWM output device. Put in our pin variable, which is going to be our pin 26. And also we're going to set our frequency to 50. And this Python script here is going to be our initialization script. So the first thing we're going to have to do is do full throttle, which is going to be 10% PWM signal. So I'm just going to be putting a 0.1 because it's 10% of 1. And with GPIO 0, it's just going to be in between 0 and 1. 1 would be 100% duty cycle. 0 would be 0 duty cycle. So we're, we want 10%, so that's why I put the point 0.1 there. Then we, we're going to set our low speed. I ended up mixing this up. It's supposed to be 0.05. I'll end up fixing that after. And then we're going to set our half speed, which is going to be 0 0.075. And then we're going to actually output motor.value equals 0 to actually output a 0 percent duty cycle once the script's actually done. You can see that the script actually did work, but the problem is that it won't have any variability. So I just ended up turning off my power supply, turning it back on so that the ESC would reset, and then we can actually try this again. You can see the series of beeps that it does whenever it's actually initializing. And then the half speed, normally it will operate. So I'm just showing you a little script that I made here that you can actually vary the PDF the duty cycle through the script using some if statements. You can also see that I made a DEF function right here. You can also see that the input that we're sending to the function set motor speed is going to be a value in between 150 that we're going to be sending to it. Then we're just dividing that by 1000 so that we actually give the motor dot value a number that is actually in between 0.1 and 0 0.05 and you can see inside of our for loop we're just incrementally stepping down from 100 one every time we run through that loop until we actually get to 50 and then i made an r for loop so we can actually step that up and do the opposite so go from 50 back up to 100 that way we can vary the speed through the actual script and you can also see that we're actually using a try statement here the main benefit to this is is if you do a control c you can see at the end we did motor.value equals zero, so before it actually quits, it'll actually set the PWM signal to, or the uh, duty cycle to zero before we actually exit out of the script. And you can see it's just stepping down, stepping back up, until so it gets to 100, and it's going to sit there for five seconds. Well, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Thanks for watching. If you like it, leave a like. If you dislike it, leave a dislike. And talk to you next time. Peace.